Hey everyone and welcome back to another VR recap going over some of the major stories from the past few days and also highlighting those smaller stories to give them a platform. Today we of course have a ton to cover so I'm cherry picking stories, not everything's going to be covered, this is what I like the most, but we have VR flexing on more than just gaming, some of my favorite parts of Facebook Connect, of course that little thing called the Oculus Quest 2, and a public service announcement slash sort of an apology video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, casting your vote with the subscribe button is the best way to make sure you see more. I hope you all enjoy the video. But first, a congratulations is in order. It's something to be happy about. It's not what I wanted to be happy about getting into Facebook Horizon. But Vertigo Games got what they deserve and joins Coke Media adding VR gaming to the group's global network. Vertigo Games are the developers behind a lot like Arizona Sunshine, Traffic Jam, Skyworld, A Fisherman's Tale, and soon after the fall, it is a huge catalog of VR titles. So not only do you have a studio determined to make VR better, and they've proven that, well the Coke group is also on board. Coke Media CEO has stated, We have been monitoring the VR market over the past years very closely. We feel that now is the right time to extend our group activities into this amazing and fast growing sector. I am sure that we are only at the beginning of the technological development of VR and what it offers players around the globe. We are delighted that with the acquisition of Vertigo Games, leading VR experts are joining our group. Together we will push the boundaries of VR gaming even further, combining our strong global development and publishing network with their specialized VR games expertise. Having one of the best dedicated VR studios out there, partnered with the huge global network by a believer in VR's potential, well that makes me happy. That was exciting to see and Vertical Gaming, this should get more attention for this and can't wait to see what they come up with next. And of course we need to go over the Oculus Quest 2 and everything Facebook Connect, but two quick clarifiers for this. I'm not going over it all, that's way too much information. Instead I'm focusing on the ones that interested me, that made me happy the most, that I want to talk about. I'm very curious though to hear what your favorite things were down in the comments. Point number two, something I'm very excited about, I cannot be happier that my leaks were confirmed to be true because I already had night sweats of a YouTuber apology video coming, crisis averted that felt good. Here are some of my favorite Facebook Connect items in mostly the order they came up. So AR glasses I think potentially could be larger than VR one day, at least in everyday use, but why I was so skeptical of Apple actually releasing something this year is the tech just doesn't seem as consumer ready as I think many want it to be, something Facebook seems to be very aware of. A stepping stone though may be a great idea and I would love to get my Blues Brothers on with some Ray-Ban smart glasses, look and fly and putting test answers right in my view at the same time. It's early for this but I was immediately hooked and greatly appreciated the talks of privacy and understanding the dangers of new technologies. Whether they follow through is a different question, but I appreciate the words. While I want to acknowledge this, I'm not happy about this at all, but it's still with a sad heart that the Rift line is definitely in the grave and will be fully buried in 2021. But Facebook seems to be doubling down on the Oculus Link with the Oculus Quest 2 and with 90Hz Link support coming, I can't think of any reason to advocate to even pick up a second hand Oculus Rift S. However, a question that I saw thrown around a lot after Facebook Facebook Connect, what is PCVR's future? I'm interested in seeing if any PCVR titles in the caliber of say Half-Life Alex or Boneworks, something large, are in the works right now or if compatibility with the Oculus Quest line both 1 and 2 with the Link will slow down PCVR solo juggernaut titles that need to balance it between multiple headsets. I don't know the answer to this, it's really just a big question of mine and I'm very interested being a PC VR player mostly, what are your thoughts on the state of PC VR? But the games, right? The chicken or the egg debate, what's good hardware without some good games to play? And while tons were announced, here are just three of my most anticipated titles, things that interest me. Let me know yours and why down in the comments. Of course, Medal of Honor. You all knew this would be on my list, not only because it's multiplayer, which I love, but I have that sweet spot for that childhood love of that Call of Duty on the PS2, the D-Day level. It was amazing. It is fantastic though. The number one thing that I'm happy about Medal of Honor is to see it crossplay and actually on Steam VR as well, which I think keeps this game alive. Without Steam crossplay combined with Facebook requirement hate, no crossplay would have been lower player counts than acceptable, which for multiplayer games is death. This was a great move. And while it came out on Twitter, of course I have to mention Population 1. Now I can't say much yet, 
I think this game is a perfect example of the phrase. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. Honestly guys, just buy this game when it comes out. And of course, I'm excited about Splinter Cell. There is something about stealth games, the VR mechanics are just perfect for an immersive experience, and it's one of the most polished stealth games ever made. I am eagerly awaiting a wire-free play on this one. I'm excited to get more info on it soon. Of course though, the bell of the ball was the Oculus Quest 2, and when it comes to a reveal, while it was as exciting as it could have been, we kind of knew what to expect due to the massive leaks, but still, there is definitely a lot of questions going around, so let's clarify everything that we know about the Oculus Quest 2. The Oculus Quest 2 gets rid of the OLED panels for a higher resolution LCD panel capable of 90 Hz. Now this panel provides 1832 by 1920 per eye, which is roughly 50% more pixels than the current Oculus Quest and a higher resolution than the Valve Index. Yes, that surprised me as well, with a note of near zero screen door effect. The trade-off, of course, is no true blacks. Index owners know the struggle of that. Quick note on the 90 hertz standard that has people kind of confused. I've seen this a little bit all over the place. Natively, on the home screen and menus, the Oculus Quest 2 is going to run at 90 hertz. However, for individual applications, it's up to the developers to enable that mode, so expect 90 hertz gaming to roll out over time. It is 10% lighter and, of course, hosts the upgraded Snapdragon XR2 chipset. As for the LCD panel, being a single panel, there is now a simplified three-step lens adjustment with the three settings going from 58 millimeters, 63 millimeters, and 68 millimeters for the IPD adjustment, so a Cyclops like me can make this work. Lastly, of course, the prices were confirmed with the 64 gigabyte being 299 and 256 gigabyte 399. There's of course tons of other stuff. You got new controllers, head straps, accessories, blah, blah, blah. But for now, I'm gonna hold off on speaking about those until I get my hands on a unit. Either way, what's a verdict? Honestly, this headset gives not only a value proposition, but spec wise alone, real competition to even the PC VR headsets out there. At this point, but Facebook is going to be the new, VR is dying, and the Facebook requirements are probably the only deciding factor of if this is worth it, because other than that, it's a big yes. But let me hear your thoughts on the Oculus Quest 2 down in the comments below. And before the public service announcement, let's talk about one of my favorite things to see, VR used for more than just gaming, and two highlights from Facebook Connect. This is the new Infinite Office coming to the Oculus Quest 2, a collection of work-focused features perfect for creating your own virtual workspaces. Using this, you can make your own digital office with numerous virtual monitors. You have the ability to snap them to real-world objects to enhance that experience. And eventually, with Logitech partnerships, you could even be typing on a real keyboard while fully in the headset. Now this will be coming as an experimental feature, with more coming over time, no release date yet. Also, there is Oculus Move, the new fitness experience that will be on board the Oculus Quest 2, rather than just an app. From the video provided, there are the normal fitness app accoutrements like calorie counters, time trackers, charts to track progress and more, and challenges to be hit to give that motivation. The future of working out may very well not be in the gyms, but in VR, and that is pretty cool. And these are two great value adds because VR is and needs to be much more than gaming, it can be life-changing. Let's end today on a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart and an apology of sorts. Many of you saw this article up here from Road to VR going over Facebook policies and how it could affect your Oculus account regarding mandatory Facebook accounts requirement coming soon. And many of you also saw this video of me making a fake Facebook account and seeing if we could get away with it. And we got a level here. Come on close, bring it in. I got a bad word coming. That was a stupid fucking video idea and I shouldn't have done it. I do want to read you guys a quote provided directly from Facebook to Road to VR about the situation. If you log in using your Facebook account or merge your Oculus and Facebook accounts and violate the Facebook community standards, conduct in VR policy, or other terms and policies on any of our platforms, your access to or use of Oculus products may be impacted. If your account is fully disabled as a result of this violation, you may also lose access to your games and content. So for everybody who's planning to make a fake Facebook account to use their Oculus Quest 2 or for their future Oculus purchases, you do you boo, 
but I was an idiot. I shouldn't have done that video and you should not risk your Oculus account and all your purchases and everything making a fake Facebook account. With Facebook policies ever changing, future code of conducts changing for VR on Facebook platforms and all these other things, what may be safe now may not be safe later and you are at risk of losing everything if you're trying to dodge the system one way or another. My segment on making a fake Facebook account was a very dumb idea. I apologize about that. It is not something I recommend in that video completely disregard that junk but that is going to be it for today's video if you enjoyed it leave a like it means a lot to me make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon that way you never miss an upload and as always we'll see you next time space cowboys